Not one, not two, but three teachers were watching me, kind of stunned by how I was just standing there with my hand in the air. There was no way in their minds that standing quietly with my arm raised was one of the effective at classroom attention getters, until it was. And to be fair, they were all surprised and even encouraging once they could see it had worked. When I read the research on classroom attention getters, I was surprised to discover that there are teachers who do not use them. So let's dig into why they're important first, according to the research, and then you'll be primed for choosing the one that suits you best, and I will offer you some options. And so let's get started. Just remember to hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon so you get my new videos each week. So classroom attention getters are a classroom management te technique, whoops, having a tough day today, that allows teachers to obtain and maintain the attention of the students. Attention getters for the classroom are deliberate actions that can be verbal or nonverbal, and they seek to gain the attention of the class. The primary purpose is to bring the focus back to you, the teacher, and facilitate a transition to the next activity or instruction. So that's pretty technical, but in short, what it is is you're trying to get their attention and you want their focus to come back to you, plain and simple. And it's a choice that you make and consistency is great. So why are they important? First, attention getters can enhance focus and engagement. They help the teacher gain or maintain the concentration of the students and prevent uh, the students from becoming distracted. I had a couple that I used consistently, one for getting their attention and another for initiating cleanup or the transition to the next activity. Uh, they were both specific. They were both used consistently and constantly and the students actually loved them. Okay, second, and I've already touched on this, the consistent use of classroom attention getters can improve overall behavior, contributing to a sense of order and predictability. And the consistency in the use is key. Uh, for example, example, standing with my hand raised meant it was time to stop talking and turn in their seats and eyes to me. I did not mind if in a transition the students were all talking or if while I grabbed something, they had a quick whisper with their classmates. I didn't mind that at all. What I minded or what I um, uh, reinforced through classroom expectations was the immediate uh, giving me of their attention when, um, when I was ready to go. And it didn't always take a hand raising. If, it, if I was just distracted for 10 or 15 seconds, I just had to come back to where I was standing and they were all back there because by then, they ha were um, well adapted to what I expected, when I expected, and that I wasn't going to shout at them. You know, hands on top, that means stop. I just never did that. So, but in a different situation, when they were playing a math game, I had a different signal for cleanup. So uh, when the sound of Chewbacca roared on my phone, they knew it was time to clean up and Chewbacca has a bit of a story behind it, but you would not believe the level. I mean, my noise, my classroom was always noisily engaged in uh, the sense that there was, the, it, it didn't get to shouting, but it wasn't a whisper either. It was definite full voice conversation that the students were having while they were playing their game. And over the voices of 20 students, you could still hear Chewbacca roar and I didn't have to say a thing. All around the classroom you hear, oh, it's Chewbacca, it's Chewbacca, Chewbacca, Chewbacca. They loved Chewbacca, it worked better than any bell I'd ever heard of. Third, depending on which attention getters you use, they can assist students in developing their social emotional learning skills. A verbal call and response like knock, knock, and the response breathe and stop can be effective or simply leading uh, by example with a quiet hand up to teach self-regulation, which is what I, taught and used and I should be clear just because I don't like the ones where you're shutting doesn't mean that they're not evidence-based doesn't mean that they're invalid or lack value uh, I just um, for the classroom that I wanted and the um, ambiance that I wanted and because I've already got a loud voice and I speak fast and there was lots of laughter and there was lots of noise I just found using a quieter one is what created the environment that I felt worked best for our classroom.
So finally, effective attention getters can build a more positive classroom climate. Consistent, predictable signals create a sense of safety and belonging amongst your students. Attention getters that emphasize cooperation uh, and respect, nurture empathy and social skills in students. So, you know, by just standing there with my hand raised, clearly visually indicates that I'm expecting their attention. And um, because I've nurtured a classroom of suspect, respect and I demonstrate respect to them, then uh, they give that back to me. And of course, by establishing a classroom where we're all responsible for the classroom together through chores and cleanup. And, you know, I reinforce cleanup. If they put their, their games away um, in an untidy manner, then they weren't going out to recess. So, I mean, this was all reinforced. And this nurtures their empathy for me and for their classmates. If they want to bail and run to get outside and play, then, you know, we'd have the conversation. Now, why is it that your friend doesn't want, you know, are you, why are you assuming your friend doesn't want recess? So all of these things nurture empathy and social skills in students as well. So now let's take a look at some examples of attention getters. So there are the ones that start with verbal cues. Now these may be verbal and visual. You may incorporate both. So for example, one, two, three, eyes on me or hands on top, that means stop. And I'm saying this in a normal tone of voice. Um, I've heard teachers, hands on top, that means stop. And of course, in the din of a classroom, that may make more sense. And um, I've also heard teachers using visual cues. If you can hear me, put your hands on your head. If you can hear me, put your hands on the head. And the combination of the students closest to them, uh, hearing them, stopping their talking, so lowering the volume of the classroom, and the visual of putting their hands on the head is um, uh, has an impact on the whole class. So those are verbal combined with visual cues, and they can be very effective. So classroom attention getters that have nonverbal cues. Now let's be clear, nonverbal cues doesn't mean that there's no sound to them. They're often a clapping pattern, um, but there's, okay, so let's go through them. The nonverbal cues include the hand signals, which is what I do with my hand up. Then there's clapping patterns. I clap twice, you clap twice. Or you might start with and hopefully each time you clap, more students are going to join in and then there's just standing and waiting it's i've done that lots of times and um there's usually a specific reason for it actually though i want to get a sense of their mindset so it's a bit of a test okay are you guys even paying attention are you kind of like if we're in a place where they're excited and a little bit dysregulated i kind of want to take a measurement on how they're doing and so i might just stand and wait and of course, I will escalate that to my hand up in the air if necessary, if I see that they're dysregulated. But my job is to kind of stay on top of things so we never get to a point where they are dysregulated. And I don't think I've ever had to do more than raise my hand because by the time you go on a field trip, you got to know that your classroom is um, following you. Now, inter interestingly, another way of getting cl your classroom's attention, this is more for when you stretch their developmental attention span. So say um, they've only got six minutes at their age, my taught primary. So six to seven minutes is really what you've got for direct instruction. And you're kind of pushing it past that. But you've got more to teach that day. So you may do a brain break. So that's getting up and it's distract. It's taking away from the work, but it's also getting their attention back. So getting a classroom's attention is not just keep them focused in their seat at this moment. It's how am I going to keep their brain uh, um, attending and engaged? And sometimes that means you have to give them a break. So um, it can be brain breaks like um, active breaks. Uh, in my class, a favorite was running around the school once, which was great. Uh, mindful breathing exercises, which help them to calm down and to bring their focus in. Although I would do that more if we'd done something that was somewhat dysregulating, like a whole class activity um, where they were working with partners. So they were kind of a little escalated uh, clapping patterns, as I demonstrated earlier. And so they're taking doing part of it. You're doing part of it. Superhero poses. One, two, three. Strike a pose. And it creates engagement and probably a few giggles and it gets them paying back 
uh, focused on you. It doesn't take long. You might want to do two or three, but it's fun. It's gauging. It's lighthearted, but they also know the purpose of it and it brings them back. And you can do silly walks that would be similar maybe to the superhero poses, but that gets their, their core moving. And as soon as you get those core muscles moving, it uh, rewires the brain a little bit. So anyways, you've got the idea. There are many more, but it's essential that you find work, what works best for you and your students. And truth be told, if it's working well for you and it kicks into your personality and who you are, then it's likely to work well for your students. You may have the year where you have a very atypical student where you have to adjust it a little bit, but I didn't. Um, I didn't. So... Uh, hopefully you can find something that works consistently for you as well. So something that's really important for effectively using classroom attention getters is that you're establishing clear expectations for um, making these uh, attention getters an effective classroom management technique. Students need to understand the purpose and method of each attention getter to respond appropriately. In my class, the sound of Chewbacca meant it was time to clean up. I didn't have to say a thing. And uh, this became a routine and consistency practiced um, and practice helped cement these routines in my student's mind. So I could literally be working with a student. Chewbacca would go off and I didn't have to move. I didn't have to interrupt my work with the student. We could finish up. I could encourage that student. And meanwhile, the classroom around us knew that even though I wasn't watching them and standing over them and directing them, they knew what to do and um, what their job was, and they got to it. It is powerful. So clearly classroom attention getters are powerful, and they are an evidence-based tool. With intentional implementation, consistency, and practice, they do much more than just drawing attention to the teacher. They enhance focus and engagement, improve classroom dynamics, support social-emotional learning, and build a positive classroom climate. Try out different types of classroom attention getters to be consistent, practice them with your students, help them to understand the purpose of them, and you will find they make a significant change. You've got this, just one step at a time. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today, and I do look forward to seeing you again soon. Before you go, I encourage you to download your free classroom management checklist. There's a link down below in the description. I am here to empower you to take charge in the classroom by supporting you with evidence-based classroom management strategies and resources. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for joining me again. Bye for now.